brag. Even the commanders on the ground know this. I had to find this out personally. In 2003, I invaded Iraq with the 1st Tank Battalion, 1st Marine Division. And you know what? There was no insurgency back then. And yet when I went back a year later, in 2004, the resistance to our occupation had already formed. Why? Because throughout history, people have always and will always resist when their homelands are occupied by violent military foreign powers. What would Australia do if they were invaded? What would America do if they were invaded? And yet, somehow we're pretending to be shocked that the people of Iraq somehow don't want us there if we've gone in and destroyed their country. Or better yet, we're actually trying to hold them accountable for the misery that we have inflicted upon them. George Bush, my commander-in-chief, arrived this week from the Green Zone in Iraq to the Green Zone in Sydney for APEC. He comes with an entourage of over 800 personnel. The city has been shut down. Barricades have been thrown up everywhere. Everywhere Bush travels, he has to erect a fortress to protect himself. What the hell is this man so afraid of? I'll tell you what he's afraid of. He's afraid of the people. He's afraid of the 75% of Americans that disapprove of his leadership, of the 90% of the world that disagrees with his brutal foreign policy. He's afraid that the people ultimately know that there would never be boots on the ground in Iraq if there wasn't oil under the ground in Iraq. He knows we ultimately have the power to stop this war. A couple weeks ago, George Bush actually tried to rewrite history and evoke the legacy of Vietnam to further justify this occupation. So what did we learn from Vietnam? Today we can learn that ultimately Vietnam was ended not by the politicians, but by the people. See, we have a whole history that has been stolen from us. It's a history of mass active duty GI resistance. There is a myth that says the Vietnam War ended when the Democrats in the United States started a vote, vote against that war. But the reality is, the Vietnam War ended when the masses mobilized in the streets and when soldiers put down their weapons and refused to fight. The Vietnam War ended when pilots dropped their bombs in the oceans and when soldiers refused to leave their fire bases. Just take a look at the thousands of pages of internal Department of Defense documents detailing explicitly how the military was literally at the state of collapse at the end of the Vietnam War. It was in a state of mutiny. But you will never hear that history in our classrooms, and you will never see that history in our movies. But it's a history that cannot be oppressed. Because every time governments go to war, the people forced to fight their wars quickly realize that they have much more in common with the people they are told to kill than by the people telling them to do the killing. So here we are once again, a new generation fighting the same old war. And once again, the guys on the ground, the ones that have seen the atrocities, the ones that are being told to kill, us veterans and active duty service members, we're done. We're done being told under the threat of court martial to run over children that get in the way of our speeding convoys. We're done abusing and torturing prisoners. We're done raiding and destroying the homes of innocent Iraqi people on a nightly basis. We're done being hired thugs for the 160,000 contractors in the U.S. representing U.S. corporate interests. We're done being exposed to depleted uranium, the Agent Orange of this war. We're done coming home broken from one, two, three, four tours of duty only to find out that the Commander-in-Chief, George Bush, has actually cut funding to the Department of Veterans Affairs 
that he's told our doctors to diagnose us with pre-existing personality disorders instead of post-traumatic stress. We're done killing for lies. Just look at the numbers, 40,000 people have gone AWOL since the start of this war. Recruitment is at an all-time low. This war machine is beginning to crack. Since I've been here, all I've heard about from the media is this a supposed threat of violence from the protesters. But nobody is talking about the issues behind these protests. No one is talking about the real violence. The real violence that only those of us that have been there can truly understand. It's the slaughter of 600,000 Iraqis. It's the complete disregard for human life that us as soldiers are conditioned to have when we're in Iraq. When we invaded in 2003, we killed men, we killed women, and yes, we killed children. I saw buses filled with women and children blown wide open by tank rounds. I saw our command legalize murder when we went weapons free, when we changed the rules of engagement. This is the same thing they did in Vietnam, but they called it free fire zones. If it moves, it dies, and it did. We were never there to help those people. I was ordered to bury the humanitarian food I was given because we were told we are the United States Marine Corps, we are not the United States Peace Corps. We have one mission and that is to fight. And that's what we did. Four and a half years later, this man's lies are known throughout the world and yet he continues to act with impunity. So tomorrow, I'm going back to the U.S. to continue building the active duty GI resistance movement with Iraq Veterans Against the War. And you guys here need to stay and continue to do what you've been doing and get Howard out of office. Make no mistake, Australia does have blood on their hands. Yes, their military involvement in Iraq is insignificant. There are twice as many police here in Sydney as there are troops in Iraq. But that presence adds a political legitimacy to the Bush regime with this supposed coalition of the willing. And George Bush you have violated international law and are a war criminal by all Nuremberg legal standards. Yeah. Your surge has failed and you won't fool us with this little numbers game you're trying to play. I don't care if attacks have gone down 80%. It doesn't matter. Your benchmarks are a farce. The only progress we will see in Iraq is when all foreign troops have left. So when the people of Basra and Baghdad and Nazaria and all over Iraq have a few hours of electricity each day and turn on their TV, they're going to look to us with hope as they see the whole world standing up with them and against the governments that are acting in our name. Thank you.